Tonight, we're hearing from a mother and daughter seriously hurt during the Club Q shooting last year. They are sharing their story for the first time with the Denver News Station. Denver 7's Amy Wattis sat down with them to hear their message, sharing why it's so important the victims are never forgotten. This will be my first time having my mask off on TV or anything. 36 year old Felicia Priester Collins says it took her about six months before she took her mask off in public. I knew I was going to get a lot of stares and stuff, but now I walk around, you know, head held high because I'm here, you know, and there's it shows strength to me, it shows courage. Felicia and her now 19 year old daughter Talia Priester were both shot at Club Q in Colorado Springs just over a year ago. She was dancing. I was dancing. You never think that you take your kid out somewhere and you're unable to protect them. Felicia and Talia say they ran to the exit once they realized gunshots were going off. As soon as they stepped outside, they were hit. I was like, what the heck? So I looked on the ground and I seen blood all around me and then my legs started to sting. Talia says she was shot in her right leg. Felicia says she was shot in the back of her neck, the bullet penetrating an inch from her spine. It blew out my the left side of my face. Um, I have no jawbone, I have no teeth. Um, they had to actually take the muscle tissue, nerve, and the tendon and everything out of my leg to re reconstruct my jaw. She says she was also shot in her right thigh, crediting David McRae and McRae's boyfriend for helping her and Talia that night. Denver 7 spoke to McRae a few days after the shooting. Blood still stained the jacket McRae was wearing. We sat there and applied pressure, applied pressure to the wounds. Um, that's where all of this came from. Kept us warm, held us, talked to us, you know, and he, he asked, you know, to, is there anybody I need to call? Felicia says she was in the hospital for about 22 days. Her daughter about a week. A year later, they're both still dealing with complications. I can't drink regularly. I have to drink from a straw. Certain things get stuck in my cheek the way it's shaped inside. It's a lot of numbing. Like my face is always asleep like my leg is. When my leg starts to hurt, it's it really just stings and then um, it goes numb and then it feels like I have electricity just going all the way from where I was shot from down to my toes. And the mental pain is still very real for them. I have nightmares. She has nightmares. And you, you go to the doctors, they prescri prescribe you this medication. You're on antidepressants, you're on other things, but it doesn't help because you're constantly thinking about it. Felicia stresses it's so important for people to never forget those who survived that day. This is something that's going to last a lifetime for us survivors. And I don't want nobody to forget us because we made it, you know. Even though we made it, we're still struggling. I feel like everybody just cares at the moment instead of just thinking what we have to go through every day. Despite the daily mental and physical pain, Talia says she's trying to live a normal life. Felicia says she tends to stay home more. One thing she hopes to figure out at some point. We're here for a reason. I don't know what that reason is yet, but I hope I do find out and fulfill it. Amy Wattis, Denver 7. And our Denver 7 special report, Club Q, one year later, looks at the legacy left behind by the victims and one-on-one -on -one interviews with the heroes who helped step in that night and save lives. The full half-hour special is available right now on Denver7.com.